weren't hard enough the Sox take on the defending American League champion Texas Rangers and the king of rock and roll is in the house on Elvis night here at beautiful U.S. Cellular Field. City Beautiful, Chicago, Illinois. WGN Sports on the U presents White Sox Baseball. It's Paul Canerco, Juan Pierre, Jake Peavy, and the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Michael Young in the first place, Texas Rangers. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With Steve Stone, I'm Ken Harrelson. As we get set to bring you the first of this three-game set. As you know, the Sox lost that ball game last night and lost that Cleveland series two games to one. So the Sox come in at 61-62, and 62, still four games back of Detroit. But tonight... A good hitting Texas team and Jake Peavy on the bump. Jake Peavy's five and five this year, and it appears he's getting stronger each and every time out. Look, this has been a big battle for him coming back from a surgery that's never been done on a pitcher before, and so you'd expect that he'd have some problems. But his control has been letter perfect. The question is, as the pitches start to mount up, will he have the strength? And he's going to need it because this is a very good Texas team, and they lead the Angels by six games. Matt Harrison goes to the mound for the Angels. He's ten and eight with an ERA in the low threes. Harrison's a good young pitcher, just starting to figure it out, and this is a tough guy who's 2-0 lifetime against the Sox. This series is a big one, like every series from here on in. Cleveland and Detroit are going head-to-head -head as we speak. Let's see if we can get the first one tonight. All right, sit back, relax, and step it down. White Sox baseball coming your way.
the Midwest watching the WGN Sports Baseball Network in Central Illinois on WCFN 49 on WHOHD 13.3 in Des Moines, in Peoria on My 59 Peoria, and in the Quad Cities watching on WQAD 8.2. Welcome back to U.S. Cellular Field, where we're minutes away from the first pitch in Game 1 between the White Sox and the Texas Rangers. This week is White Sox Charities Week, and toward that end, the White Sox organization and its players have been very active in the community, helping out where help is needed. Earlier today, pitching coach Don Cooper and first base coach Harold Baines teamed up at the Greater Chicago Food Depository at the Mobile Pantry event, distributing food and vegetables in Chicago's Austin neighborhood. Meanwhile, White Sox utility man Brent Lillibridge visited with pediatric patients in the Brown Family Life Center and the White Sox Day Center at Children's Memorial Hospital. To learn more about Charities Week and how to get involved, visit whitesox.com slash community. Stay tuned. We'll have the starting lineups for tonight's game right after a break. games over the Angels. They come in 72 and 53. On the road they're 33 and 30. So let's see how Ron Washington is going to line up his Rangers tonight. And it's a largely right hand hitting lineup. Ian Kinsler leads it off and it's Andrews, Hamilton, Young, Cruz, Napoli, Moreland, Torrealba and Murphy in left field and hitting ninth. The defense and now they're going to line up behind Jake. It's Pierre Rios and Quinton left to right with Morel, Ramirez, Beckham, and Lillibridge. Tyler Flowers gets a nod behind the plate. And Jake Peavy trying to win his sixth game of the year, the ERA at 469 on for the 15th start. Opponents hitting 267 against him. Beautiful night for baseball. Not a cloud in the sky. Game time temperature 79 degrees. And the umpires for the game tonight. Behind the plate, Jeff Nelson at first, Vic Carapaza at second, Marty Foster, and Bill Welke is at third. So the Sox ready for yet another big series, and they're all big at this point. They've thrown the ball around the infield. We're ready to play baseball, and I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrelson. All right, Stone Pony, thank you very much. And once again, welcome. Welcome to White Sox Baseball right here at WGN Sports on the U. Ian Kinsler gets set to lead it off against our 30 year old right hander Jake Peavy. Kinsler at 242, 18 homers and 56 knocked in. And the first pitch of the ball game is taken for a strike. 
Rangers come in hitting at 279 as a club. That's 25 points higher than ours. They have a very fine 3.70 team ERA. As that's popped up right side. Good try. Big effort. The ball just caromed off the glove and Lillibridge almost went tumbling into the stand. So you applaud the effort. He almost came away with just a spectacular catch. Instead, the young lady did. <laughs> so the 0 2 pitch. This is the sixth meeting of the year between these two clubs in the first five. We have won two of them. Rangers come in at 72 and 53. They're 33 and 30 on the road, 39 and 23 at home. As there is a souvenir right side, and here at beautiful USA, it'll feel 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straightaway center. Kinsler, one of the most powerful of all leadoff hitters in this league. He gone. Not very happy with the call of Jeff Nelson, but. Eventually, Ian's going to have to get out of the batter's box. Close enough. So that'll bring up the 22 year old shortstop, soon to be 23. You could read Jake's lips, and he looked into Tyler Flowers and said, That was a strike. Elvis Andrus hitting at 279, three homers and 45 driven in. Takes first pitch strike, outfield around to the right. Well, even with the bag off the line at third. And there's another strike. And the White Sox plays Philip Umber, who was hit. In the forehead above the right eye last evening on the 15 day disabled list and brought up Josh Kinney from Charlotte. And that's. Fired foul there's Philip took a shot. Wow. Talk to, him. Talk to him before the game and he said he was surprised because it was a curveball. He wasn't used to that particular pitch coming back through the middle. And it could have been a whole lot worse. A little bit high. Kenny at Charlotte was six and three with a 2.77 ERA, 14 saves, and 66 strikeouts, and the team high 49 relief appearances. Softly hit. And if you missed that game last evening. And I asked him if he got his glove anywhere near the baseball. He said, nope, not even a stitch of it. So here's last year's MVP, Josh Hamilton, hitting his 302, 15 homers, and 68 knocked in. And that's popped up Alexei. So it's going to be a nice, quick one, two, three inning for Peavy. After having to play at the Rangers, nothing, and the good guys coming to bat.
the ultimate driving machine. And here's how Ozzy's going to line him up with Juan Pierre leading it off. Then it's Lillibridge, Canerco the DH again with Quentin Ramirez, Rios, Flowers, Morrell, and Beckham playing second and hitting ninth. The defense, and now they line up behind Harrison. It's Murphy, Hamilton, and Cruz in the infield, Young, Andrews, Kinsler, and Napoli. Norby Torrialba behind the plate, and Matt Harrison on the hill. His ERA a fine 319. Came over from the Atlanta Braves. Juan Pierre. And before we show you our fix to click, you at home select yours. Pierre at 283, a couple of homers, 35 knocked in. There's a bunt. This is a good one. Take it in your pocket. So good speed aboard. He took a look at Michael Young and realized that he wasn't taking away the bunt. And once this ball hit the grass one time, that was about it. It's not going to roll foul. And you can let it roll forever. So here's Lillibridge hitting at 257, 10 homers, and 21 knocked in. Harrison, big man, 6'4, 240 pounds, 25 years old out of Creedmore, North Carolina. This is one of those deals where the Braves really gave up a lot. Mark Teixeira was the principal going back their way. And that is fouled into the LG Skyline club seats. Rangers got up. Telly Feliz, their closer, Matt Harrison, one of their mainstays in the rotation. Along with Jared Saltalamakia. Got him for Mark Teixeira and Ron Mayhay. Outfield straight up. A little bit of a gap in the right center, and there's a, another 94 mile an hour fastball. Juan, 20 stolen bases in 33 attempts. Bigger lead now by Pierre. He did not go. And the count one and two. It's a pretty good middle infield in Andrews and Kinsler. Young is steady at third. They miss Adrian Beltre. He was one of the best defenders around, but he's got a hamstring problem. As he was rehabbing it, he hurt it again. They don't expect him back until September sometime. And that's low in the dirt. So two balls, two strikes to Lillibridge. First of a three game set. Tomorrow night, Johnny Danks against Alexei Ogando, 27 year old right hander. And then in the finale of the series and this homestand, Gavin Floyd against Derek Holland, 24 year old Southpaw. And a full count. So Harrison way up. Now it's full. Rialba's got a pretty good arm. We'll see if Ozzy wants to gamble by sending one. There's a strike him out. And one picks up the stolen base. That was not a good throw by Tori Alba.
Takes a little something off. It's a changeup. And Juan takes a look in to see if there's contact. The throw is high and away. And he's in easily. So here's Pauly. Pauly sitting on 1,995 hits. Five hits short of 2,000. And that pitch is outside. Andrews now coming in to talk with Harrison. Pauly hitting at 316, 28 homers and 84 driven in. Looks at that one. Now he has the catbird seat. So first base open. Quentin on deck. And there's a the strike. When you throw 94 and your straight change is at 82, 83 in that area, that's a good disparity. It's not soft enough where a guy can double clutch and still hit it. And that's what Harrison has. Kensler hanging out around second. Bit of a gap out there in left center. And another change up. This one misses, so three and one. He doesn't care if he walks him. Best arm in the outfield by far is Cruz in right field. Three one. And there's ball four. So the pitch around. Two on one out, and that'll bring up Quentin. Hitting a 255, 24 homers, and 76 knocked in. Far, it's a really unusual defensive set as you got both Kinsler and Andrews playing right up the middle. Quentin has faced Harrison ten times, has one hit, and takes first pitch strike. That time Kinsler broke to the bag and was out of position when Harrison actually threw the ball to the plate. And that's low and away. So Pierre at second. Canerco at first. One out, one and one to count. And that's a fair ball right down the line. So Polly, he'll go into third on the double by Quentin, and the Sox take a quick one nothing lead. RBI number 77 for Carlos as he got a breaking ball. 
This ball didn't stay over the inside part of the plate, which is, I think, what he wanted. And Carlos took it right down the line, past the diving Michael Young. And a promising way to start the first inning. And with that double, Carlos is safe at second. Safe and secure with New York Life. Don't stop now, boys, as here's Alexei. Hitting at 263, 13 homers, 51 driven in. He is two for seven lifetime off Harrison. And takes first pitch strike at 94. And there's a base hit right back through the middle. Now this is being held. And now on a bad throw by Hamilton. Alexei goes into second. That's a terrible throw by a veteran outfield. And a heads up base running play by Alexei. As soon as he read the angle of that throw, he just took off because he realized nobody could cut it off. There was no way that Ramirez was going to go to second base. And there was no way. That Carlos was going to score. And for some reason, Hamilton just airmails a cutoff man. We'll take it. So the pitching coach out, Maddox. No stop now, boys. Ducks on the pond, just one out. This is more like the early Matt Harrison. This year, in talking with Ron Washington, he said that Harrison was able to pitch out of some spots when he pitched himself into some trouble. In years past, if you put some pressure on him, you probably were going to get to it. Well, he's made some bad pitches in key situations here in the first inning. Let's see if the rest of this lineup can make him pay the price. So here's Rios. Hitting at 213, seven homers and 28 driven in. Napoli, even with the bag well off the line at first. And that pitch low and away. Pile of flowers on deck. Change up right off the end of the bat. Two down. So a big out for Texas, and it'll bring up Tyler. Flowers hitting at 321 since being called up with a homer and three RBIs. And this becomes a very big at bat because you've got a relatively young left-hander on the ropes here in the first inning. Certainly like to get more than two, especially against this Texas offense. And fouls that one back. Outfield short and center and in right. Nelson Cruz in five or six steps short. Hamilton three or four or five. And the count one and two. Right there, 
Could not pull the trigger. We pick up a pair after one of his two nothing socks. Two nothing Sox here in the top of the second. And Jake Peavy with a one two three first. He will face Young, Cruz, and Napoli. Big year for Michael Young. One of the most under the radar outstanding players in a long time in this league. He has been some kind of player. When I talked to him before the game, he was supposed to be designated hitter primarily, and Ron Washington told me get him in twice a week defensively. But when Beltre went down, he became the everyday third baseman. And when you look at some of his years and some of his numbers and all of those hits, pretty impressive. Out in front. And that's out number one. Well, he was upset and justifiably so. He's been a star with this franchise for a long time. So here's Nelson Cruz. Six times he's had over 200 hits. And another three times he's been knocking at the door. So he's been a good hitter for a very long time. Cruz at 264, 26 homers, and 77 driven in. And there's the strike. 41 to count. Nelson's got some big power to right and right center field. One and two. Cruz last year, 318, 22 homers, and 78 driven in. One of the few guys you'll see who chokes up on the bat with big power. He gone. Good hard slider. That one just kept moving away from Cruz, who expanded his strike zone and missed this by a foot. All you youngsters out there, just because you see majority of major league hitters not choking up, there are a lot of them who should be choking up. You can hit it just as far. In fact, some guys can hit it further. The greatest home run hitter in the history of this game choked up a couple of inches. 
And he could hit it 500 feet easy. Napoli at 293, 20 homers and 50 knocked in. 21 to count. Last year with the Angels hit 238, 26 homers and drove in 68. And count two and one. Jake's got pretty good stuff tonight. So far, the slider we've seen has been as good as we've seen it. And count three and one. Last time out against Kansas City, went into the seventh inning. Walked only one, four and run. Took a little something off that one. A little spinner and a full count. Mitch Moreland, the on deck hitter. Just off the plate. And the first Texas base runner. Tyler wants it away. Jake gets it there, but it didn't tail back quite enough. Jake thought it was good enough. But Jeff Nelson has the deciding vote. So here's Moreland. Hitting at 277, 14 homers, 41 driven in. Last year in a cup of coffee with the Rangers at 255, nine homers, and drove in 25. This guy's dangerous. Just 25 years old. He hits the ball hard to all parts of the ballpark and when he thinks about all parts of the ballpark he's very tough. When he gets very much pull conscious is when. You can get him out that ground ball to the right side. That's popped up stay in here. Come back come back it will. And that'll retire the side nothing across. There were no hits. One left after an inning and a half. It's two nothing. White Sox. For up to the minute stats and information, log on to 3w.wgntv.com and enter the game zone brought to you by Connie's Pizza. You can park at Connie's on Archer Avenue and take the free shuttle to each game. Call 312 Connie's for more information. That's 312 Connie's. Brent Morrell, Gordon Beckham, Juan Pierre here in the top. We'll check at the bottom of the second inning. And count two and zero. Oh. Oh. 
three and nothing. In case you did not hear, General Manager Jim Henry was relieved of his duties today by the Cubs. And there's a the strike. There's some interesting speculative names that have popped up. There's another strike. Rick Hine, our own Rick Hine. Assistant general manager to Kenny. Josh Burns, former D-backs GM. Bobby Cox. They threw his name in the mix. That ball hit high and deep. Stretch. Stretch. Hamilton back. And it's off the fence. So he gets caught close. And he is safe at third on the triple. Yet another triple. The five of them in one game against the Indians. And Brent Morrell hits this one off the wall. Josh Hamilton thinking maybe to go out of the park. Gets too close to the wall. On the carom, he's got no chance as this one bounds away. And a very promising way to start the second. So the right side in. Andrus now starts to come in as here's Beckham as he takes first pitch strike. Some other interesting names. John Sherholtz, who won 14 consecutive divisional titles down in Atlanta with Bobby Cox. And the count 0 and 2. Terry Ryan, formerly of the the general manager of Minnesota still associated and affiliated with that organization and Pat Gill. So some interesting names. Some good names. Everyone. Bobby Cox was the general manager before he left that position to take over the managerial post. At Atlanta. He was doing both of them and then figured it was tough enough to do one they brought in John Sherholtz. 14 division titles later they had a pretty good team. Well, anybody thinks they can be the manager, general manager is an egotistical maniac. It's, it's really a little too difficult these days. Sick person who thinks that. That's foul back. So the count hangs at two and two. That's top foul. Gordon's been scuffling. Really scuffling. Tigers leading Cleveland 2 0 that game in the bottom of the sixth. At Comerica Park. And that's a one hopper right to third and one out. So with one out here, let's check out our. Picks to click tonight. Jim Angio, our director of the crew, went with Ramirez. Steve's going with Pile of Flowers. And the Esler family. Josh and his dad, Mark, and I, who are in attendance tonight at the game, we're going to go with Brent Lillibridge. So here is Pierre. Had a bunt single. Started off that two run first. And also picked up a stolen base. Now the only play is the first they get in, so the squeeze works, and it's a three-nothing game. Beautiful job by Juan Pierre. Even though they were playing in very close at the corners, both Napoli and Young were on the grass. Juan knew if he laid down a good enough bunt, it wasn't going to matter. And this is a perfect bunt. No chance to get Morel. And turns out to be a very good play by Harrison, but not until the third run scores. That Corners in close, the infield in has never deterred a manager, a good manager, from putting the squeeze on. So here's Lily Bridge, a strikeout victim, last inning.
One drives in his 36th run of the year. He's had two perfect bunts and two at bats. Well, the first three months of the season, he didn't have his bunting game. Nope. He did not have it. He kept working. There's not anybody in this game who works harder than that guy you're looking at. Nobody. You might tie him, but you're not going to beat him. Man, there's a high pop up right side. Get out of here. It will. Unless you're the guy that is charged with keys to the ballpark where you open it up, you're not going to beat Juan Pierre here. And you see him out there every day working on his bunting, both drag bunts, push bunts, doing everything he can to make himself better. And that's why as the year goes on and a lot of people start to settle, Juan's batting average usually just starts to climb. 2 1. 3 4 0 for our guys if you're just tuning in. No runs, no hits, no errors for their guys here in the bottom of the second inning. Andrews. And that'll do it with the leadoff triple. The one out. Bunt. Squeeze. Scores Morel and it is three nothing. Good guy. It's a 3 nothing Sox lead here in the top of the third. The orbit Tori Alba David Murphy and Ian Kinsler. To face Jake Peavy. First pitch strike. Second pitch strike. 0 oh, 1 2 the count to the 33 year old receiver. Comes in at 284, four homers, 29 driven in. Last year at San Diego hit 271 with seven homers and knocked in 37. He gone. Whoops. Got a piece of it. Count hangs at nothing in two. Jake's been around the plate with just about everything, and even when he's missed, he's missing just barely off the corner. But tonight's one of those nights where he knows exactly where he's throwing everything. And 
Ryan just got a piece of that. Yes, he did. He gone. Third strikeout for the Jake Meister. One down. That slider tonight is pretty nasty. And with a right handed dominating lineup. Like the Rangers are running out there. That slider is going to come in handy for Jake tonight. So here's Murphy. Takes it high and wide. And a reminder halfway to St. Patty's Day White Sox green caps and fireworks presented by Miller Lite is Friday September 9th. First 20,000 adults ages 21 and over will receive a White Sox green cap presented by Miller Lite. The tickets 866 Sox game or White Sox .com. One and one to count. Murphy at 246 five homers and 23 knocked in. One took the mask right off Jeff Nelson, I believe, and that sends Tyler Flowers out to talk with Jake, just to allow Nelson to compose himself. It's professional courtesy. Watch it again. Ooh. That's in the dirt. Murphy last year hit 291. 12 homers and knocked in 65. Defending American League champion Texas Rangers. He had a pretty good leg up on it tonight. As they hit into a six game lead. Full count. They know if they lose this one. It's Baltimore at the Angels and Dan Heron goes to the mound for L.A. He gone. Change up. But the plate. Jake's thrown just about everything where he wants to. Murphy thought it was down, but that ball had a piece of the plate. And as you can see, pretty effective so far for Jake. Here's Kensler. He was called out on a slider. And the count two and zero. Oh. Slider strike. So two and two. Yankees with a half game lead over Boston. Yankees in Minnesota, I believe, are tied, yeah, tied at one bottom of the third. That pitch is fouled by. Boston taking on Kansas City at Kauffman Stadium. Well, there you look at the AL East. Tampa Bay would be having a good year, 10 over by any other standards except for the East. He go. Well, Jake strikes out the side. Five strikeouts for the Jake Meister, and he leads it 3 nothing.
for just a buck 89, but you don't have to remember it to love it. Prices and participation may vary for a limited time a la carte only. Here's Canerco. He walked and scored back in the first inning. Cues it right off the end of the bat. Well, and got, that is one pitch, one out. Yeah, Paulie got turned around in the batter's box. He was not going to beat that one out anyway. So Kinsler had plenty of time. We talked about American League and the National League. Phillies with an eight and a half game lead over Atlanta. Atlanta leading Arizona three to nothing. That game in the top of the fifth. Milwaukee a seven game lead over the Cardinals. There's a strike to Quentin. And the D backs with a two and a half game lead coming in over the Giants. Colorado very disappointing. 11 and a half games. 21 to count. Quentin, who had a double and an RBI. Right down the third baseline. Had a good pitch to hit and couldn't do anything with it. Up high. Full count. Down goes Quentin, two out. It was another good change by Harrison. Three and two, a hitter can't possibly be looking for this. Just have to hope that maybe a layoff and it's off the plate. Here's Alexei, he had an RBI single. And that pops it up when bringing it back. Murphy. And that'll do it. A one, two, three inning, and we will go to the fourth leading three nothing.
Top of the fourth inning. It'll be Andrus, Hamilton, and Young to face Jake Peavy. Three runs on four hits, no errors for us. No runs, no hits, no errors for them. Took something off that, had him way off balance. Andrus grounded softly to his counterpart, Alexei. Big gap in left center. Rios well over towards Quinn. There's a bunt. Jake says, I got it. And he does. When you take something off the ball, it really disrupts the bunt. That pitch was at 77 miles an hour, so Andrews, who squared around, gave Jake a lot of time to start breaking in because he could see it. And because he took something off, it became very difficult and he didn't come close to beating it out. Well, hitting his timing. And it's the pitcher's job to disrupt the timing. That's what Jake is doing tonight with a lot of different speeds on that slider. Well, you don't see we st we had a little period there, oh about three or four years ago. The guys were starting to change speeds on the breaking, especially with the slider. And that's gone. They're not uh, nice pick. And Hamilton, who popped up to short, now retired by Becca. But now it's just. Boom, 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 boom. You got a great one. It's it's okay, but if you miss with your spot, then you got some problems. There's only a handful of rows. Yeah, it's not, that's not, not many. Oh. They'll bring in Michael Young. He grounded out to his counterpart, Morell. First pitch strike. That's the art of pitching, throwing strikes and changing speeds. This is with that fastball, one and one to count. Elvis Knight here at the ballpark. And there you can cancel a post game show. First hit for Texas. And Jake took something way off that one. That was at 74 miles an hour, and Michael Young was able to wait back just long enough. That's a slow breaking ball. The bad part about it was it stayed up. And that's what allowed Michael Young to drive it through the left side. So here's Cruz. Stuck out swinging. Short lead by Young. Okay, Young leading the parade in hits with 107. Michael Young over the years has been one of my favorite players to watch. He can do a lot of things to beat you. you don't see a lot of emotion from him. He goes about his business professionally. And he's just been a great player. Well, in that little dispute that they had when they were going to, because they acquired Beltre, DH him and then try to get him in there a couple of times a week. He spoke. That's the first time I've ever seen him that much in the, in the media. And I don't think there was any way that Nolan Ryan was going to let him get away. There's some talk about a trade. There's a lot of talk about trades. And Nolan said, I don't think so. That's off the corner. So two and one to count with two down, Young at first. This is a running team. They've swiped 109 bases. Top set foul. Well, they're dangerous. Hamilton and Young are just good hitters. Real good hitters. The rest of them are just dangerous. And they're good mistake hitters. You better not make mistakes against them. Kinsler, Cruz, Napoli, Morley. And of course, Beltre is a good hitter. The 2 2 pitch. 
Adrian Beltre is good across the board. And when he's out there defensively. Along with Andrews. Young. Or Kinsler depending on who's going to play at any given time and Moreland at first. Pretty good defensive infield. Well Beltre to me is the most fun third baseman in baseball to watch. He's going to do something every game. That you see him play at third base that you're going to say wow. He does probably throw from down under. With more velocity than anybody in this league. Well Cano he and Cano. Robinson's got tremendous velocity from underneath. But those are the two tops. And the payoff pitch. There was a get me over breaking ball, and it's going to be off the wall on one hop. They're going to wave Young around. So he hung him one. And he's lucky he stayed in the park and it's a 3 1 ball game. That is that mistake we were talking about. Cruz, good mistake hitter. Drives in run number 78. Cuts the lead to two. And that breaking ball stayed over the inner portion of the plate. Cruz, who is just tremendously strong to all fields, drives it over Pierre's head. This coming with two outs. And Napoli's another guy you don't want to make a mistake on. Napoli walked back in the second. There are certain exceptions to every rule in baseball. But for the most part, all you can ask your hitters to do with those certain exceptions, who are just great hitters, is ask them to be dangerous. That's all. Be dangerous if you can and four at bats. Napoli came over from Toronto. In exchange for Frankie Francisco and cash considerations in January of this year. One one pitch. And a reminder you can join the Shy Sox mobile group by texting Comiskey to 244 769 for a chance to win $100 in Comiskey cash and four premium lower box tickets to the game on September 9th. Text Comiskey to 244 769. Three and one account. Detroit now leading four to one. In the bottom of the seventh. At Comerica Park. Peralta just home. For the second time, he walks Napoli, and here comes Coop. And in case you did not hear, the ESPN has picked up that September 4 Sunday night Sunday game. It was originally scheduled for 1 o'clock Eastern. It's now going to be a night game on ESPN on Sunday, September 4th. And that's very going to make it very difficult in our ball club because of the fact. We're going to get to Minnesota probably around two or three o'clock in the morning, and then we have a day-night doubleheader the next day on the fifth, Monday, against Minnesota. Back baseball has no control over that, and I would bet you ten to one that ESPN didn't even check to see. No, they didn't check at all. What was going on on Monday? Or if they did, they didn't care.
So here's Moreland. He fouled out to Morrell. Takes ball one. I think Don Cooper went out to talk to Jake Peavy. He tried to overthrow the ball to Napoli. And that hasn't been what he's been doing all night. He just tried to reach back, get a little something extra, and it missed well wide of the zone. In the center field, way back, and it is a 4-3 Texas lead. They are dangerous. This guy is dangerous. You make a mistake. That is home run number 15. RBIs number 42, three and four. Ron Washington told me that Mitch Moreland can hit the ball as far as anybody in their organization. That he doesn't even realize yet how good he can be. And here's an example of a breaking ball that stays down and out over the plate and gone. All is coming with two out, nobody on. A single by Young, the double by Cruz on a hanger. The walk to Napoli. And Tori Alba can't get it. He struck out his. First at bat leading off last inning. And that's popped up, but the damage is done. A big crooked number goes up on that board, and we'll go to the bottom of the fourth trailing 4 3. We trail it 4 3 as the Rangers have scored a four spot in the top half of this inning. So Rios, Flowers, and Morell to face Matt Harrison. Rios 0 for 1. First at bat came to plate back in the first inning with runners on second, third, one out, and hit a little soft comebacker to Harrison. Two and zero the count. That's high. Yankees leading Minnesota two one. Top of the fifth at Target Field. Cincinnati leading Pittsburgh six two. Bottom of the fifth at PNC. There's a strike. Off the end of the bat, and it's going to hang up for Murphy. So one out. That's one of the few times that I saw Murphy, the left fielder, 
Young and Andrews full shift on the count. The count went to three and one. They figured Rios is for sure going to be pulling anything he throws, and they all shifted over just a touch to their right. As it turned out for Murphy, he was able to be in the right place at the right time. So here's Flowers. Called out on strikes, fastball as he takes that curveball high. Boston leading Kansas City 2 1, bottom of the fourth at Kauffman Stadium. Earlier today, Cubs beat the Cardinals 5 4. Now, Ron Washington is coming out because his left hander fell behind 3 0 on Rios and now has fallen behind 2 0 on Flowers. Tell him to stay aggressive and go right after him because you can't pitch that way. You're not going to win from behind. Now, if you're a hitter, do you look for a fastball after the manager went out there? I used to hate it. Yeah, oh heck yeah. I didn't. Just, is, it, is there anything else? <laughs> Got it. Fouled it away. That one fouled right off Jeff Nelson again. So he's having a tough night behind the plate. Yeah, Jeff's a good umpire. He got the fastball. And he's a tough guy. Ouch. It's a good crew. Take care of Ponza first. He'll be back there tomorrow night. And what we've seen of him every time we've had him, I think we've had him a couple times behind the plate. He's been good. Two and two. Washington. Don't, don't worry about it. Get after him. Another fastball. Guys can pitch, and other guys got to throw. Well, he probably said, "Son, if they hit you and beat you, that's fine. But if you walk them and they beat you, that's not so fun." That's so fine. Fastballs after the visit, after the 2 0 count. Two out. Throws that one on the outside corner with good movement. Two up, two down. Well, you've heard stories about Sam McDowell. Mm -hmm. Played with him on the teammate. And that's. Bad jump right there, but recovered nicely by Cruz. He slipped. Anyway, that's a one, two, three inning, and we'll go to the fifth.
And Chicagoland viewers, how would you like to win five five dollar footlongs from Subway? Just be the 500 texture to text Subway to 97999. So go to WGNTV.com for complete info and rules. As we get set to go to the top of the fifth, Murphy to lead it off. Four, three, and O for them. Three, four, and O for us. Takes it way outside, Murphy. Struck out, called out on a good changeup from PV. Twenty one to count. That's in the left field. And it's out number one. Getting back to the Sam McDowell. Sam had the best stuff to this day I've ever seen in the game of baseball. He's talking about four pitches. The fastball, the curveball, he could throw 100, the slider, and the change. And Sam got in this little rut there. He used to call his own game with the wipes. Upstairs, then add, downstairs, then subtract. So he was getting rocked around. He was that ball hit hard. Nice play by Brent. He was trying to trick everybody. Three, two change ups, three, two curveballs. Then you can throw 100. So Alvin Dark was the manager and he had a meeting for the game. He was pitching against Detroit. Duke Sims was a catcher and he said Sam in front of the whole club. He said every time you shake off one of Duke's signs it's going to cost you 100 for the first one. If you shake off two it's going to cost you 200. If you shake off three it's going to cost you 300. Sam did not shake off one sign. In that entire game Duke called with the exception. I think it was two or three breaking balls. Called all fastballs. Sam threw a three hit shutout, so I think struck out 14. Well, he threw 100 when the guns were different, but it really was 100. Right. Well, he's, he's got, he had the only, besides Steve Dalkowski, I faced him a lot. He was the hardest thrower in the history of the game. You could hear, occasionally, you could hear this fastball over seams, because the seams were a little higher back in those days, and you could hear Sam's fastball occasionally. That's a fair ball. Right over the top. Nice. Quick one, two, three inning. We're halfway home. We need one to tie. Precarious and the toughest position in all of sports to play. And here, Jake Peavy, two out, nobody on, fourth inning, gave up the four runs. And sailing along, seemingly unhittable. And all yeah. of a sudden, Michael Young gets a base hit on a breaking ball that stays up. 
And then the inning just gets away from him, but he comes back with a bounce back fifth, so now it's up to the offense. Plus the fact that each and every pitch could be your last. As a count two and oh. I mean you played all sports as I did. Played football and basketball, and baseball. I think to, to this day I just really firmly believe that it's the toughest position in all the sports pitching. Well, it's an interesting position because nothing at all can happen until you decide to throw the baseball. That's number one. So you're in control of everything. And then seemingly when you think you have it figured out, you don't. And there's ball four. So the second walk issued by Harrison. Well, that's why baseball, I love it so much. It's not played against the clock. You cannot score when you're on defense, and when you're on offense, the other team controls the ball. Harrison very unhappy with himself with the four pitch walk to Becker. Yeah. And this ball one to Pierre. So Tori Alba going out now. Maybe reiterate Ron Washington's thoughts. Juan has two bunts in this game. One for a base hit. And a run scored after a stolen base. And the next one in the second inning, a squeeze bunt to drive in Morell, who had tripled. Outfield short and swung well around to the left. There's a strike and count one and one. Five for seven in stolen bases. Another butt. And they're going to get him at second base, but the ball gets in the center field off the glove. That'll be an error on Andrus. And a big, big break for our Sox. Yes. That's going to be air number 25 on Andrews. This seemingly one of the easiest plays you'll see. Tori Alba gets it. Gets it the second in plenty of time. And Andrews just missed it. He looked in his glove to see if it was there. No, it's not. Nobody out runners at the corner. And here's Lowbridge, a strikeout and a ground out to short. He's had a couple of good pitches to hit as that's taken downstairs. Texas air number 102. Ouch. As opposed to the Sox with 57. Might behoove you to make him get it down a little bit. One and one to count. Four, three, and one for them. Three, four, and oh for us. Pitch in the count. One and two. Just make a little contact in the infield. To anybody but the pitcher or young. And it's a tie score.
Gap out there in left center. And that's going to get the job done. As Gordon will tag, he will score. And this game is tied at four. So the leadoff walk comes around and burns Harrison. RBI number 22 for Brent on the sacrifice fly. That's just his second sacrifice fly of the year. And a reminder, Sox fans, every White Sox Friday home game is United Flyway Friday. Each Friday home game, one lucky fan will have the chance to win two free round-trip tickets to anywhere in the continental United States if United Airlines flies. United, proud to fly the Chicago White Sox. Pauly has walked and scored. Both walks by Harrison have crossed home plate. And Paulie also has grounded to second. First and third in Paulie. Let's make that error really hurt. He's not going to pick you off unless you're going to go on first move. Not with that move. I think that's the best he's got. And the ball in the dirt. So that'll be wild pitch. Number five. Harrison doesn't have a lot of command tonight. Goes a change up. This one just eats up Tori Alba. Now pick him up, Polly. Kensler hanging out around second left that right side wide open. If he gives him anything to hit here, I would be shot. <laughs> Three and one. Another very hittable 3 0 pitch for Pauling. Good to take. Full bent up and going. And it's Tatiyama. Yoshinori Tatiyama. Here comes Ron Washington walking as slowly as you can walk. And I believe that that's going to be it for Harrison. He's Just, already made the call to the bullpen. Yeah, he had no command whatsoever. Last time we saw Harrison, he was crisp. He was real good. But thank goodness he was not tonight. He'll depart. We'll be back.
could win one of five top prizes of two hundred fifty thousand dollars and quarter million dollars or one of over two thousand additional prizes ranging from fifty dollars to one thousand dollars instantly. Yoshinori Tatiyama comes into the game. He's one and oh this year the ERA 262 on for the 31st time. He inherits runners at first and second. He is a sidearm. And he's 35 years old. 5'10, 165 pounds out of Osaka. 12 year veteran of the Japanese baseball leagues. The two teams, Nippon and Hokkaido. So here we go. One in, one out, two on, and here's Quentin. He's one for two, had an RBI double in the first inning, and then he struck out in the third. Carlos thought that ball was a bit high. I could understand why he would. They still pinch Carlos up the middle with Andrews and Kinsler more than I've ever seen any team do. At breaking ball, a sweeper. So the count one and one. They should be familiar with a sidearm breaking ball after taking a look at Joe Smith and Vinny Pistano for a series. This guy's isn't quite as good. And that ball hit deep stretch. Stretch Hamilton back at the fence makes the catch. And that's out number two. What a blast by Carlos to the deepest part of the ballpark. That fastball right over the middle of the plate and down exactly where Carlos would have wanted it. Hamilton has it with a step to spare. So here's Alexa. He's one for two with a, an RBI, a single, back in the first inning. Breaking ball pops in. All right, we're going to get one. We'll go to the six tied at four.
And this week is a very special week for the entire White Sox organization. Now, last Sunday, the picnic in the park kicked off White Sox Charities Week here at U.S. Cellular Field. And the week concludes tomorrow night with the ultimate auction during the game telecast on WGN TV. So tune in tomorrow at 6 p.m. for a chance to bid on some great experiences and some great prizes. 4 4 time. Josh Hamilton has popped a short and grounded the second. Will lead it off for the Wranglers. And he's got a 2 0 count. This is the one guy on this team that you really worry about because of his success lifetime against Jake. But he's handled him tonight. And the count three in it. And even leading off an inning, you can't lay one in because Ron Washington. Might just give him the green light. He does, and it's foul. Well, we might be the only club in American League that doesn't have a 3 0 offense. <laughs> I know. Yep. And that ball is hammered, but just foul. And you can bring out a group of 20 or more fans for the 2011 season by purchasing a block of tickets or upgrade your out even with one of six great party areas. Call 312-674-1000 or visit whitesocks.com. The Bertucci boys will definitely take care of it. And that is fine. One of the greatest examples of 3 0 offense was back in 04. That's foul back. That 3 0 offense got the Red Sox to the playoffs. That 3 0 offense got them through the playoffs. And that 3 0 offense won them a world championship. Well, if you've got guys that can consistently hit the ball out of the ballpark, you might as well just turn them loose. Well, that's what you go for as a hit. Up to the plate. The two most precious things you have are the batter's box, because you can move, you can create your own strike zone, and the count. And you fight to get a count that you can get a good pitch to hit. And the advanced scouting on our club, there's no question. They say they don't swing three and all. So Jake, just lay it right there. Jake's got Hamilton in swing mode. Watch out. Fired over into the camera well. When you look at the fact that most of the at bat has been away. When he's gone in, he's gone way in. And that's gone. That's 5 4 Texas. And we told you about his success about against Peavy. And he kept following him and following him until Jake got a little too much of the plate. That's his 16th and 69th driven in. And that was a, a no doubter. So Rangers now 147 home runs. We have 121. He just reaches down and cranks it. So here's Young. Michaels one for two started off that four run fourth. The two out nobody on and he got just a hanger from Jake and hit him just by just by Morell. That's in the right field. And it's out number one. They could only given up four home runs in 88 innings coming into this one and he's given up two tonight. This isn't your normal offense. This is one of the better ones around.
Here's Cruz. He also got a hanger. And hit a bullet, a one hopper off the left field wall for a double, knocking in Young. Cruz now with 24 doubles. And 78 RBIs. And we do know that Detroit has won their ball game against the Indians, pushing them two and a half games back. And a count two and two. He's leading Minnesota six to one, bottom of the six, the target field. Boston leading Kansas City five one, top of the six at Kauffman Stadium. And a full count. Next pitch will be number 94. In the right feet. So two out. And that'll bring up Mike Napoli, who has walked twice and scored once. The Sox fans, every White Sox Friday home game is United Flyway Friday. Each Friday home game, one lucky fan will have the chance to win two free round trip tickets to anywhere in the continental United States at United Airlines Fly. United proud to fly the White Sox. There's a broken bat, Duck Snort. That went out toward Morrell. The ball went out toward Quentin. And the end result is Napoli keeps it alive for Moreland with a three run homer last time out. And here's what he did back in the fourth on a breaking pitch. Yeah, it's 15 homers, 44 knocked in. Mitch Moreland is one of the big reasons why they could allow Chris Davis to move on in a trade with Baltimore to get Buhura to help their bullpen. Well, it's a battle of bullpens. There's no question about that. Look at Mike Maddox, pitching coach. That may be never how good your starters are. We've proven that this year. Our starters have been terrific. Our bullpen for the most part has been terrific. And there's another one. It is 7 4. He is dangerous. That was advertised by Ron Washington. Tommy Moreland has no idea how good he can be. And we've seen it tonight as he's driven in five. And it's a seven to four game. This is just a fastball down and out over the plate. They have scored six of their seven runs coming with two out, nobody on. And here's Tori Alba. A strike out and a ground out to third. And this will end the inning, but they put another crooked number up there, three spot, and after five and a half, it is Texas by three.
Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana. Chevy dealers are supporting leagues and young players in their communities through the Chevy Youth Baseball Program. From the big leagues to the youth league, Chevy is truly the official vehicle of baseball. Seven four. Rangers. Three home runs, one by Hamilton, two by Moreland, accounting for six of the seven runs. So for us it'll be Rios, Flowers, and Morell. And except for Cruz, it's been the few left-handers in the lineup that have done the damage. There's first pitch strike. So Tatiyama in line to pick up a victory here. If he can hold them. And whoever else comes in can hold. Them. There's going to be probably a couple more coming in. Tatiyama for the most part has been about a one inning guy. And the count two and two. Josh Kinney, who was recalled when Philip Umber went on the disabled list, is warming up in the pen. And that's popped up right side. Correa's now 0 for 3. But Josh Kinney this spring, he had flashes of absolute goodness. And there was some conversations about him making this ball club. And at times he was running it up there 95 96. It fits with the Cardinals before. So he's no stranger to the major leagues at 32 years old. So here is Flowers can't get the breaking ball. And a reminder you can follow the White Sox with the MLB.com at Bat 11 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Blackberry. Get live audio, pitch by pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. So just text at Bat to 31826 or visit WhiteSox.com. This account 0 and 2 to Tyler. Slow breaker. <laughs> that one at 61 miles an hour almost didn't get to Tari Alba. That one stays inside. Elvis Knight here at the ballpark. Always a fun time at USA the field. I don't know who the guy was, but the Elvis impersonator who sang the national anthem did a terrific job. Got him. Two down. Three strikeouts for Tyler tonight. That is not. No, that's not him. That's not the guy. Looks like the guy, but he's not the guy. From the ears up, it looked like him. Yeah. Resembles Dr. Jack Ruby a little bit. He loves Elvis. Well, His favorite. I tell you what. The older I get, the more I love Elvis. I was fortunate enough. I saw him. It was. I think it was his second. Second appearance on, on the tour. Yeah. He, he was Where? just a kid. Savannah, Savannah, Georgia. And of course, blue suede shoes. Carl Perkins had really done, had originally done that. But meanwhile, Tatiana with the one, two, three, and we'll go to the seventh.
And there's a look at Josh Kinney with some pretty impressive numbers from Charlotte. Opponents batting average of 221, a 6 and 3 record, an ERA of 277. 14 saves in 49 games. And when Philip Umber went on the disabled list, Josh Kinney was recalled to add to that still very good bullpen. David Murphy. First ball hacking. Kenny, 32 years old, 6'1, 215 pounds. And that is top foul out in front. Pitch at 83. Yeah, this is one of my favorite nights at the ballpark. My favorite, of course, is Mother's Day. Then Dog Day. I love Dog Day. And then Elvis night. As I said, I never I never met him, but boy, I'll tell you what, I was just a yeah, the three greatest entertainers that I've ever seen. In order. In person I'm talking about. Michael Jackson, Sammy Davis Jr. and Elvis. I saw two of those. Never saw Elvis. He gone. Pretty good hook right there. I saw Sammy Davis down in Bahamas. Yeah, I think it was Anyway, he was sick as a dog. And they didn't think he was going to be able to perform. And uh, he finally. After about an hour delay, came out. He did two and a half hours with a break, of course. He did two and a half hours. Had a big orchestra there, and he played every instrument in that orchestra. We well, played at where I went to college, Kent State, and then came over to my fraternity house afterward because one of the kids had his father as an agent, one of his agents. And one of the things he did was the quick draw with the guns. He was unbelievable <laughs> from all the westerns he was in. There's a base hit by Kinsler. So he's going to pick up his 31st two bagger. Kinsler out of Tucson, Arizona. That one kind of hung in the middle of the plate. And he takes it inside the line. We talked with Ian before the game. He said that he briefly transferred to Arizona State, didn't play there. Texas has got themselves a good one. Andrus 0 for 3 takes ball one. And that's top foul. A one and one to count. Seven runs, seven hits, one error for them, four runs, four hits. No errors for us. Jake tonight went six innings, gave up. All seven of the runs on six hits with a couple of walks and five strikeouts. Kinsler is 21 and 2 in stolen bases. Best keep a close eye on him. And that's a top foul.
Gap out there in left center. Breaking ball. Tyler kept it in front of him. So two and two. And once again, a reminder of game two tomorrow night of the series. 6 10 start. Johnny Danks against Alexei Ogando. Make your plans to be with us. If you can't, that game will be over WGN and we'll have that big auction where you can get on some terrific experiences and terrific prizes. Texas has all five of their starters in double figures in wins. Something you don't see a whole lot of. Well, the first thing I'll tell you is they got a good bullpen. Oh man, look at this. Thank goodness he fell it off. Lance Johnson jumped there. <laughs> he was three quarters of the way to third base before the pitch was thrown. Josh Kenny never looks back. Now at the start of the year, we had some trouble. We had to, it took a while for our bullpen to sort itself out. Once it did, it was terrific. But there for a while we had a a tough go up out of that bullpen. Johnny Danks and Mark Burley, especially, lead with leads and come up in. He gone. Two down. Not one to pitch to Hamilton here, all things considered. Yeah. He got lucky. <laughs> he's, he's been a lucky hitter for a long time. Colfax was the. A lucky pitcher too. Right. James just didn't want to hit when he was pitching that day. It was it. They are going to put him on. After a long at bat, that saw Josh Hamilton fall off slider after slider. Finally, he got one out over the plate. And that broke the tie. That made it five to four before the Moreland two run home. So in a lot of instances, that's like one from the frying pan into the fire with Michael Young, the next hitter. He's one for three. Single and a run scored. Michael came in hitting at 342 in the season. To the backstop. Now, if you don't like Young, you can take your chances with Cruz. Tyler wants his ball inside instead. Then he holds on to it a little too long and throws it outside. Wild pitch. Want to know the count? It's off the glove. And Alexei, a nice pick by Lillibridge. Yes. 1 6 3. And that'll retire the side. Seventh inning stretch. We need three to tie.
the Xfinity high def shot of the game, and it's a caram off the glove of Josh Kenny. And went to Alexi over the middle with a very easily saved two runs. Instead, it's out of the inning. Doug White Sox baseball in high definition is brought to you by Xfinity only from Comcast. Tatiana still on the bump. And his third inning. He retired two in the fifth, one, two, three in the sixth, and here is Beckham. Blowing away. There's a strike. Andrus. And that is out number one. And a reminder. You can guarantee the best seat locations for all remaining home games at the lowest prices with the most benefits by purchasing a prorated full season ticket plan. So call 312-674-1000 and visit WhiteSox.com. One thing Ron Washington said about Elvis Andrus before the game, he said, look, he can make all the spectacular plays, but I keep on trying to tell him the routine play is what will make you a great shortstop. Just make the routine play. The other plays you can make anyway. And we've seen it tonight where he just lost his concentration, let a ball hit off his glove. It could have opened up a huge inning as it was. It tied the score in the fifth by missing a throw from Tori Alba. I don't ever recall seeing a young Latin shortstop come into the major leagues that didn't make errors. A lot of them. Not one. Tony Fernandez was the closest thing to it. How about Omar when he came in? Omar was okay. He was okay. He did. He was not the Omar that he began <laughs> when he first came in. He couldn't hit the ball. Just knocked the bat out of his hand, no, and he was a little shaky out there defensively. Seattle would not have traded him for Felix Fermin had they thought he would become That's right. the Omar that we've seen. Ryan pops it up. Yeah, Andrus is just a bundle of talent. So two down. One now. One for three. Tatiama has thrown the ball very well since coming in. Harrison struggled. He went four to third. Gave up the four runs on four hits. He walked three. He fanned four, but was consistently behind. And Ron Washington just said, too big a game. Got to take you out, son. Here's Lillibridge. 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly. Big sweeper right there. Ozzie was another one. He didn't make that many errors when he first came in. Not many, not many. Balls killed, but right size, wrong shape. And the count one and two. Well, that culture they grow up in in Latin America is entirely different, obviously, than it is here. They have to make a lot of spectacular plays and they have to swing the bat to get off the islands. There's a lot of fields that aren't real smooth. Oh. <laughs> When these guys are coming up and playing. Well, I played three years in Venezuela. We also went over to Dominican play in Panama. And I'll tell you what. You're talking about some rock piles. <laughs> Didn't want to get in too many in front of too many of those. No, but I got used to it. Oh, we laying them. <laughs> like the Matadors. <laughs> Dick Stewart got hit in the butt playing first base, which is tough to do if you're a first baseman. 
Well, I can't say anything. Willie Starts will hit me right now, but <laughs> three and zero. Oh. Where were you running to? I'm telling you, that was unbelievable. Three-two pitch. That's foul back. We were playing on the spring training down in uh, Fort Myers where they used to train the Pirates, and they were leading like ten to two. 3 0 count to Willie, you know, and he's not going to hit with a, you know, eight run lead. But he did. He had a bullet right in me, and I, it scared me to death. I just fell back over. My legs went up in the air, and he hit me right in the right cheek. <laughs> he got on first base, and I cussed him out. He was a great guy. Willie Starzer, what a player. And that is ball four. That's the first base runner off Tatiyama. Well, long ball here makes things a lot more interesting yes, as would. Mike Maddox comes out from the mound. From the dugout. The bullpen is up and going. Tatiyama has probably had as long an outing as he's had most of this year. But he's talking to him about the scouting report and what he wants to do with Canerco. And while he does, Sox fans. Every White Sox Friday home game is United Flyway Friday. Each Friday home game, one lucky fan will have the chance to win two free round trip tickets to anywhere in the continental United States that United Airlines flies. United, proud to fly the Chicago White Sox. Very proud to be with them. Jeff Nelson now goes out because all Mike Maddox wants to do is give Mark Lowe a chance to get loosened up just in case Tatiana does not get Canerco. It was the one time that he faced Carlos Quentin. He came an island, hitting the ball out of the park at the 400 mark in straightaway center field. Beats D backs 4 2. Kimball, another save. Boy, they got some kind of bullpen on there. O'Flaherty, Venters, and Kimball. I mean, it's a six inning game. They bring those three in, and pretty much it's lights out. Talk to you tomorrow. Atlanta with a six and a half game lead. As Polly fouls that one by in the white wild card race. It's going to be a seven unless the Giants can score at least six in the top of the ninth. Houston shutting him out six nothing. You get that kind of bullpen and playoff. <laughs> you can win it all. One and one to count. Paul has walked twice scored once and grounded the second. There's not a lot of teams that are going to be jumping for joy if they have to run into Atlanta in the right. playoffs. That bullpen, you better believe it. They're 22 over 500. Head low. Two and one. Big sweeper misses. Three and one. With Quentin on deck. And that'll retire the side. We'll go to the eight, seven, four, Texas. 
4-4-0 four, four, oh for our Sox here in the top of the eighth inning. Josh Kenny, first pitch. And Nelson Cruz taken for a strike. Cruz, one for three, an RBI double on a run scored back in the fourth. And the Rangers had two out, nobody on, and they scored four times. They scored six of their seven runs with two out, nobody on. Sox led it 3-0. They scored two in the first, one in the second. And four by the Rangers in the fourth. We scored one in the fifth, and they came back with three in the sixth. One and two. Slider strike. He gone. Third strikeout for Kenny, one down. And a reminder this week, well, it's a very special week for the entire White Sox organization. Last Sunday, the picnic in the park kicked off White Sox Charities Week here at USL Cellular Field. And the week concludes tomorrow night with the ultimate auction during the game telecast on WGN TV. Tune in tomorrow at 6 p.m. for a chance to bid on some great experiences and prizes. Napoli is one for one with two runs scored. He's walked twice and single. The hook and it missed. Watch out. Oh, nice play. Made it a little tough on himself, but a nice recovery right there by Brent. When you have an arm that's this good, you can give up a little ground. And instead of coming and getting it, he just retreated, knowing he had some time with Napoli running. Fired it across to get him by plenty. Our fourth drive of the game. It's Moreland's second home run. This a two run shot. A three run homer and a two run homer. 
16 homers and 46 driven in for the 25 year old dangerous hitter. And that's foul. Pretty impressive numbers overall. Mullen, who came up briefly last year, getting his first real shot at him. Nines you a little bit. He and Eric Hosmer. Both very aggressive. Big difference, Hosmer. First round draft pick. I believe it was second pick in the draft. And Moreland, 17th round in 2007. So occasionally you've got to get a little bit lucky in a draft. He gone. Four strikeouts for Josh Kenny. And we'll go to the bottom of the eight, seven, four bad guys. Run shot, a two run shot. Josh Hamilton with a solo home run that broke the tie in the sixth inning. That's really the story of this one is the Rangers lead seven to four. Visit your local Honda dealer today to test drive a 2011 Honda Cross Tour available with four wheel drive. So Mike Adams has come on in relief of Tatiama. Adams. 32 year old, 6'5, 193 pounds out of Texas, Robston, Texas. They got him from San Diego in the National League. He was 3 and 1 with an ERA of 113 in 48 games. Come on, boys. Might behoove us to put a few points on the board here. We trail it 7 to 4 with six outs to go. Quinn, an RBI double in the first, a strikeout. And a fly out deep to center. And a pop up right side. Napoli. One pitch, one out. Adams came up to the big leagues with Milwaukee back in 04. Really became a much better pitcher as he moved along. Was a setup man for Heath Bell in San Diego.
Alexei. He's one for three with a, an RBI single back in the first inning. Seven seven and one for them four four and zero oh for us. Houston has shut out San Francisco six nothing. Wandy Rodriguez nine and nine for that ball club. Vogelsong took the loss. He's ten and three. And the count two and zero. Oh. Angels leading Baltimore four nothing. Orioles hitting in the top of the second inning. After a decent start, the Orioles have just imploded. They're trying to come back tonight with Dan Carroll. Good luck. Better make him get that splitter up. Not going to hit it when it's down. And 3 0 pitch. There's one. Phillies leading Washington 4 1. That game in the bottom of the fourth. D.C. 7 1. Boston leading Kansas City. Bottom of the eighth in Kansas City. Milwaukee 1. Mets nothing. In New York. That's at the top of the third. And a full count. Jake Peavy started, went through three innings, had five strikeouts, no hits. Started off the fourth inning. There's another foul. Had Anderson an attempted bunt. Jake made the play. Then Hamilton bounced out softly to second. Two out, nobody on. Then a single by Young, a double by Cruz, a walk to Napoli, and a free run homer by Mitch Moore. Hamilton led it off and extended it back in the sixth inning with his 16th homer. Then with two out, nobody on, a single by Napoli, and a two run homer by Moreland again. Alexei is gone. Very, very questionable pitch. Very, very questionable pitch. We'll take a look on the Xfinity pitch tracks. Could have gone either way, unfortunately. Yeah. Went the other way. Said. Jeff Nelson's a good umpire. Well, but it was a very questionable pitch. He Either told, way. He told Alexi don't do that after he put it down that way, and Alexi did it one more time, and he went, Have a good night. Rios is over three. And the count 0 and 2.
Now he's 0 for 4. Brand of the night. 7 to 4 Texas. Powered by the Illinois Lottery Mega Millions and Powerball. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is worth $32 million. Saturday's Powerball jackpot is worth $37 million. I know you're not going to mess around with those. No, those are too small. Too small. Too no small. sense wasting your luck on something like that. No. Right here's the top of the ninth inning, 7-4. Rangers will be Tori Alba, Murphy, and Kensler to face. Mr. Kenny, who has gone two innings with four strikeouts, giving up one hit. Omar is short. Man to count two and up. Oh. Elba has struck out, granted the third, and going out to right. That's the first time in a White Sox uniform that Lexi Ramirez has been given the heave ho in a game. Count evens at two. Now, Pelly Feliz, the closer, is sitting up in the pen. He go five punch outs for Kenny. Breaking ball in the outside corner. Josh Kenny has shut down this potent offense since coming in in the seventh inning. This is reminiscent. Of spring training. Most of spring training, as I mentioned, he was swinging hard. Murphy is 0 for 3, couple strikeouts. Count evens at 1 with 29 year old outfielder.
two and one. Three and one. Ian Kinsler in the on deck circle. It's full. Tomorrow night, 6 10 start. Johnny Danks against Alexio Gondo. Make your plans to be with us. You can. It'll be over WGN. There's Johnny Danks, Mark Burley. Ham and, Ham and Jam right there. They are always Johnny Danks's. Couldn't have been with a better teammate to help him with his pitching than Mark Burke. And Don Cooper. Those two guys, I'll tell you. Cooper's just calling to the bullpen just in case. Let's get somebody up and throwing. Like Will Omen. So here's Kinsler. Couple of strikeouts, a grounder to third, and a double. First pitch strike. Stops that one foul. And count nothing in two. For us, in the bottom of the ninth, it'd be Flowers, Morell, and Beckham, the schedule hitters. Woman is getting ready if this inning continues to Josh Hamilton. Did not go. One and two. Ball just got a piece of that one. Hey, my here, Josh, have yourself a real good three innings. A little bit low. And it's full. Kensler with that double nice 31 three triples 18 homers 56 knocked in. And he's a good second baseman. And he gone. Six strikeouts and three innings by Josh Kenny and we'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Come on guys.
against the Rangers to conclude the series at 1 p.m. on CSN. Then it's Tuesday night out in Anaheim as we take on the LA Angels at 9 p.m. back on WGN. And that's the Lincoln upcoming schedule. So now Neftali Feliz comes into the game. Our throwing young right hander acquired in the same deal that brought them the starter, Matt Harrison, the starting shortstop, Elvis Andrews, and Feliz, all from the Atlanta Brave organization. Feliz is two and three, the ERA 323. Out for the 50th time, looking for his 25th save. And he's got a three run lead. Tyler Flowers, 0 for 3, will lead it off. Could be followed by Brent Morrell and Gordon Beckham. Those are the scheduled hitters. Tyler, and there was 0 for 3, three strikeouts. Pitch first pitch strike, that one at 98. Last hit we got was a leadoff triple in the second inning. Since then, Not it. it's been all Ranger pitching. That's high and wide. And that slider outside. So two balls and a strike. That one at 98. AJ's had his hand checked. He's going to drive some people crazy. Flown <laughs> to Cleveland to take a look at it. He's going to drive some people crazy while he's on the DL. First time he's ever been on the DL. Well, he's wearing out Hermie. I do know that. So that's out number one. That's a golden sombrero for Tyler. <laughs> to looking to swing for a strikeout. Ran is one for three. That triple that Steve just mentioned. Everything looking pretty good at that point. Oh, it was looking real good, real good. Sox led it three nothing after two. Jake had terrific stuff. Jake had five strikeouts after three. Retired the first two and the fourth, and then boom, boom, walk, boom. 4 3, Texas. And we tied it up. Without the benefit of a base hit in the fifth, leadoff walk. In a big era, the one run we have is in that inning was unearned. 0 oh 2 the count. That one into the Texas dugout. Is out number two. This guy can really rush it up there. That was at 99. Yes, he can. And you know, I, I talked to Jim Fergosi all the time. Was a right-hand man with John Sherholtz and Frank Wren down in Atlanta. About you know, they finally got you in a deal. He wanted to share it so badly. He gave up Feliz. He gave up Andrews. He gave up Harrison. And when that ball comes down, this game will be over. All right, Texas wins the opener 7 to 4, and we'll be back.